Good evening. Nothing is as old as the future. Clay tablets in Mesopotamia predict eclipses. The Greek fates measure out the mythological thread of our existence, and jinn whisper our fortunes. Comets depose kings, while animal entrails reveal personal truths. Even numbers emerge from ash as if foreordained. We interpret omens on every side, desperate to construct order from noise, cosmos from chaos. In the sleep of reason, we dream. Of course, one can trace lines back in the history of futurology as far as one would like, but we also collect data, draw charts, analyze trends, run algorithms and regressions, and our quest to characterize the future, to make it less shocking, to domesticate it. And of course, we tell stories. What is the story of the future? What is the history of the future? Surely the future has a history. We dream both forwards and backwards of the past and what might have been, and of the future and what might yet come. While we often think of ourselves as facing the unknown future, some cultures frame our relation to the future in other ways. If the future is unknown, unable to be seen or foreseen, it is therefore logically not something we face into, but something which comes at us from behind us. We move backwards into the future and see only that which has already come into our present tense. We look backward, always, necessarily so from the present. Sometimes, though, we even look backward from the future. In 1888, Edward Bellamy wrote a best-selling novel entitled Looking Backward, 2000 to 1887, which was the story of a man who awoke after having slept for decades and found himself living in an American socialist utopia. Even the brief statement of the plot of this book already suggests that futures do not always come at our bidding. Nearly a century later, the science fiction novelist Arthur C. Clarke also took a look backward. Although perhaps most famous for his novel of the future, 2001, and which of course now lies in the past, Clark also wrote a lesser known work that was set still further in the future, entitled July 20th, 2019, looking back at the world as it had come to be in the 50 years since the first landing of people on the moon. And in that book, 2019, Clark looked back earlier decades to 1929, to the year that the scientist J.D. Bernal wrote another remarkable account of the future entitled The World, the Flesh, and the Devil, which Clark thought was the best book ever written about the future and the most brilliant attempt at scientific prediction ever made, he said. Time wraps around us in complicated ways when we dream of other ages and as we look back from futures that are now already in our past in order to understand the history of the future. <coughs> Bernal's book begins with a provocative invocation of the future, itself already split. There are two futures, he says, the future of desire and the future of fate, and man's reason has never learned to separate them. After describing the synthetic futures of agriculture, energy, even further evolved humans destined for other interstellar habitats with Earth being kept as a preserve, Bernal makes the striking point. The need to determine the desirable form of the humanly controlled universe is nothing more nor less than art. Science and art, two forms of knowledge synthesized in the future. The recognition of the art that informs all pure science need not mean the abandonment for it of all present art, Bernal said. Rather, it will mean the completion of the transformation of art that has already begun. Art expressing itself on one side in a kind of generalized architecture, massive or molecular, gives form, he said, to the infinite possibilities of the application of science. Among the narrative arts, speculative fiction has long been a prominent locus for the exploration of the infinite possibilities of the future and of science and of society. In the very same year that Clark published, 2019, that is, in 1986, another prominent author also looked back, not from a fictional future, but toward a very real past. Having rediscovered the cigar box inserts and the popular cards produced by Jean-Marc Coté for the 1900 World Exhibition in Paris, Isaac Asimov republished dozens of these scenes in a book he called Future Days, a 19th century vision of the year 2000. Coté's scenes included automated mechanical barbers, maids, and orchestras, 
aero taxis and airmail, battles fought by dirigibles, underwater croquet matches, and scuba divers on giant seahorses. Radioactive hearths heated by a fraction of radium, automated agricultural incubators, and even crank-operated machines that digested books into podcasts for the ears of waiting students. And dozens more visions of the future, all presented in purely visual form. Here in Germany, the margarine manufacturer, Echte Wagner, produced similar visions of fantastic futures, with flying airships, nuclear automobiles, and handheld Skype. But whether in the form of written narrative or visual depiction, futures have always been in the form of what one writer from Hollywood's Futurama has called tech plus one. Only one thing can be changed at a time in constructing a plausible future. A wireless radio, sterile female mosquitoes, a smell-o-vision for a television. Too many changes at once, and the future becomes inherently implausible. Narrative cohesion, and not only ingenuity, matters. But when we dream of the future, surely we're also given license to speculate. In dealing with the future, at least for the purposes at hand, it's more important to be imaginative and insightful than to be 100% right, the futurist Alvin Toffler once said. Theories do not have to be right to be enormously useful. Even error has its uses, he wrote. Such dreaming was a useful way of dealing with what Toffler described in 1970 as future shock the dizzying disorientation brought on by the premature arrival of the future, the temporal equivalent of culture shock, and often brought about by the rapid transformation of the technosphere. It may well be the most important disease of tomorrow, he wrote. But technological transformation alone could not be the focus of our efforts. Dreaming the future, he said, required a concentrated focus on the social and personal implications of the future, not merely on its technological characteristics. We can reach out and humanize distant tomorrows, he said. Indeed, we must. The artfully designed futures of world building could help. He writes, if we view it as a kind of sociology of the future rather than as literature, science fiction has immense value as a mind-stretching force for the creation of the habit of anticipation, he wrote. Our children should be studying it not because these writers can tell them about rocket ships and time machines, but because they can lead young minds through an imaginative exploration of the jungle of political, social, psychological, and ethical issues that will confront these children as adults. Science fiction, he said, should be required reading for future one, a course he envisioned in which the possibilities and probabilities of the future were to be systematically explored. The sociology of the future was once again a best-selling theme then in 1970. But Toffler's invocation of children with more than two parents, machines grown from biology, space exploration, and other future shocks seemed to pale in comparison for him with the concern that he had for the creation of, quote, an economy geared to the provision of psychic gratification, which he felt would result in a novel, surprise-filled economy unlike any man has ever experienced. The issues raised by it will involve, as we shall see, he said, nothing less than sanity, the human organism's ability to distinguish illusion from reality. Fake futures. But where is the line between illusion, delusion, and dreams when futuring. Alterity in time has long given rise to possibilities of alterities in social structure. From H.G. Wells's fantastical evolutionary visions of the Eloi and the Morlocks and the time machine, to critical social interventions like the all-women utopias of Charlotte Perkins Gilman's Herland or the worlds of Ursula Le Guin. There are many social specters haunting the continents of future possibility, as Marx well knew. Science fiction, utopian manifesto, social science. It's often difficult to distinguish, Arthur C. Clarke wrote in 2019, between future scenarios. And does it matter much anymore? The narcissism of such small differences is a luxury that we can scarcely afford now, in the aftermath of the great solar flare of 2023, when we lost many of the records of our first digital age, that mesh of boredom and perversion, as it has been called. And of course, it wasn't until the rediscovery of a hidden underground bunker of servers in 2029 that we were able to at least partially reconstruct our digital adolescence. Beggars can't be choosers. It's also worth noting that when we look at the history of the future, in our focus on 3D television, flying cars, and cold microwave ovens, we missed many other things. The internet, for example, or climate change. And even many duly envisioned futures never came to pass. 
the eradication of all disease, for example, the common language of Esperanto, one world government, the population bomb, space colonization. But many envisioned futures are indeed already quite real. CRISPR and gene drives, quantum tunneling, and wireless energy distribution networks have been with us now for decades. We foresaw the Antarctic ice sheet collapse of last year, despite the last-ditch climate accords of 2033 intended to address our petromelancholia. But we scarcely foresaw the repeated failures of the Gulf Stream that have so challenged Europe's harvests and futures markets. And it's remarkable to think that only uh, last week have our nanosats left the solar system en route to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star to our sun, the ultimate extension of our technosphere as we escape not only our planet, but even our solar system for other exoplanets. If, as the historian of science Hans-Jörg Reinberger has written, the present is the future of the past that never was, then perhaps we might also say that the future is the past of the present that never was. That seems especially fitting tonight as we commemorate the centennial of the technosphere of 1948. Now, after hearing these introductory remarks, some may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> we never dream alone. And as we've heard, we hallucinate to consent to live in a consensual hallucination. Our participants tonight have come together to join us to share their dreams of the future, the brave new or psychotic worlds that they have envisioned, what they dream, imagine, hope, fear the future to have been and to be. The history of futurology is the history of dreaming, and the futures that we have long dreamt of have become reality, even if not quite always how we might have predicted. There is always room for chance. And so our participants will describe for us our different paths in 2048, paths that have emerged through chance and contingency and which has, have carried us into the realities that we now inhabit in this late age. With their help, we will experience how dreams have collectively constructed our current reality. And we will construct together the collective dream that we now live in and set courses for our future. We will doubtless keep dreaming our way toward the future as we throw the abyss forward, but therein lies the rub. Who knows what dreams may come? Does the sleep of reason produce monsters as Goya had it? Are we having a psychosis? What are the limits of the logical? Or if we think with Fritz Lang and his future vision of Metropolis, which Maria will we choose to follow for our future? The Maria that I choose to follow at the moment is the poet, Rainer Maria Rilke, who wrote in 1903 to a young friend, I want to beg you, as much as I can, to be patient toward all that is unresolved in your heart, and to try to love the questions themselves like locked rooms or like books that are written in a very foreign language. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you, because you would not be able to live them. And the point is, he said, to live everything. Live the questions now, and perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. Let us now, in that distant day, live the questions and the answers. Welcome to Future One, and welcome to 2048. Thank you. I'd like to invite our participants now to come up on the stage and to join me here. And as they join us, I'll offer a few words about how we will be uh, proceeding here. <coughs> so I think we should go where, where the light is. Yes? Mm -hmm. We only have 10 minutes maximum for each All right, so as they join us, I'll give a few words about how we'll proceed here and the general context. <laughs> we are gathered here in 2048. <laughs> We are gathered here in 2048 for the remarkable 2017 Unbound event in the same place where we gathered 31 years ago. And we're going to reflect on the path that has brought us today uh, to today in three different scenarios. Each scenario provides a more specific context for a general conversation that we'll be having and invokes a particular ritual of chance. So we'll begin then with our first reality where it is business as usual in 2048, an ordinary future 
And as part of this, we will uh, be interacting with the image you see behind us. And in this first future, we will need to use our smartphones to interact with this projection. So I hope at least some of us have, have brought them with us um, in order to interpret its meanings. So participants, I will turn this over to you. Any opening comments on our ordinary future in 2048? As uh, Archbishop of Rio de Janeiro, uh, <laughs> let me proclaim that the second coming of a Steve Jobs is anathema. Jesus techno fucking Christ will not talk to us through his iPhone 32,000. <laughs> We done? <laughs> Do we need to invoke an image? If so, then let's pull out our phones and try. Are we ready? I see a re has hers ready. You have yours ready? Yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't own uh, an iPhone. Okay. Another That's smartphone. Another picture. It is. It is the future as usual. Okay. Let's try. No, it's. It's not working. It's a, we need everyone to help us. Please pull out your phones. <laughs> Please pull out your phones. Take a picture. The, the proxy sensors here will only work if enough of us are taking a picture. So. I think we should stuff on this one. Right Let's here. Let's try. This, Ready? This square. The black one. Oh, the black square. The okay. black square. Yeah. Malevich. <laughs> Malevich. I think it's a sign. The red sign? army. The red army okay. carried that one. Let us stop. Revolution. Let us stop on the black square. Black square. What does the black square mean? Malevich painted that one, and the Red Army carried that one during the revolution. Well, the Bolsheviks, you know. You know, capitalism ended. Uh, I know it was hard back then in 2017. It was easier to think about the end of the world. Nobody could imagine the, the end of capitalism, but it came to pass. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before, yes. <laughs> But this is our world. I mean, we, we have no exit. We're basically stuck in this black box. Yeah. Would you like a bit of wine? <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you there is always an exit. <laughs> I mean, being the archbishop, you <laughs> learn, don't let them hear this. Don't yeah, wait for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean Steve Jobs. You know, Beckett, don't wait for Goddard. Never comes. <laughs> Has time stopped? The, the the pictures have stopped. We can choose one here. We can set it in motion again and choose another one. Shall we try again? Yeah, yeah. All right. Random. Let's make random. it random again. Random. Spin it through into the future. Yes. Oh, Chewbacca with Jeremy Corbyn. That's fine. So if you want it to stop, yell out stop. Keep going. Any of our participants? Oh, they're too shy. There's the Skype. I really want that chick's outfit. <laughs> well, this business as usual future is rather boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Has nothing changed by the time we've gotten to 2048? We just have updated versions of all the usual things. Hydrocarbons are still our economy. I don't know why. It's Except for capitalism being gone, of course. Of there's a major change. I mean, that's already. <laughs> the fact that you're actually trying to talk to us is really directly. It's, it's old fashioned. No, that's very old. It's very old fashioned. Old -fashioned. It is old -fashioned. Can you just send me a text? Text? Yeah, I mean. And also, it's sort Sitting of aggressive, you know. You text and I decide to this read it when I want. The future Talking, as it is today. you put on my pressure. I have to answer when you ask the question. That's so old fashioned. It is. I know. But also I'm a historian. I'm old fashioned. That's we what just I mean. need yeah, emojis. That. A, a mm -hmm. constant stream of emojis. Yeah. 
But it is not much easier to communicate by emoji today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a, at a straight a line of crap, 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 crap yeah. emoji. <laughs> and not being caught in the stupid <laughs> present that we have to share. Having had it happen, <laughs> I can speak with authority. We need That's the emoji. Yeah. Notice that there's no images of dating services. <laughs> <laughs> no images I'm wondering of about that. No, yeah, no, I don't know. I, 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 they, apparently it's not present enough. I, I don't know. We know that the internet is good for only a few things. The world was different when we lost it for a while there, that's yeah. for sure. But I guess when capitalism ended... Yeah, there was no sex. <laughs> sex, <laughs> drugs, <laughs> rock and roll to do. <laughs> Boring. Particularly if you are an archbishop. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. And with so no I've only met some of you. I, I've met the archbishop before, but I'm not sure who else is, is here with us. <laughs> yeah, who are you? Who are you? I just know your screen name, but I don't know who you actually are in real life, so this is so rare to meet in person these days. Um. Yes, you, 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 yes. Who are you? Um, well, who was I? I don't know. Um, oh, are you dead? Uh, <laughs> you see, he forgot. That's what happens with all these, you know, liquidity. Oh, that's another scenario. <laughs> <laughs> keep changing, keep changing the personalities. So, who are you today? Well, um, I don't know. In 1948, history proceeded sequentially. Um, but things are different now, aren't they? Mm. But that's also an old, an old fashioned question. Around, you don't ask who are more. you anymore. You have to, <laughs> we, yeah, we have all our aliases. That began in the, uh, the, well, the second decade of the 20th century, about 2015 or so, that everybody, like in electronic music, everybody has like six to 25 aliases. And uh, so the question, who are you? That's, you have to contextualize what the maybe, question is. That's maybe, not a meaning question anymore. Then maybe the question is, how many are you? Exactly. <laughs> oh, which one do you choose tonight? Ooh, my name is Legion. Not <laughs> names, identities. So still missing the dating service. It's, it's all dating services, though. It's all dating services. But given we're you stuck in this hard. black box. <laughs> we oh, are stuck in this black box. Some <laughs> For another three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> remind, me, remind me not to begin a theater true pair with this lot. I mean. <laughs> so given that we are stuck in this black box, you're about to say. Yes. Well, I mean, we could basically recreate our whole context, invent a new one. I mean, yeah, but why should we better? Why should we so make it reinvent? Better? So rest. She's very happy with her legion. Hmm? Legion, sure. very happy. With it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm very happy inside of the black box. <laughs> it's the only place we know. We never leave our black boxes anymore. Mm. Exactly. So. <laughs> This is the most nonsensical conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we are trusting and committed to chance. <laughs> I think I hear the future arriving. Mm. I definitely didn't drink enough. It was about time. This one is really boring. <laughs> Why don't we proceed into the future and to our second reality. A bio future where the seeds of 2017 have come full flower and where all of our technologies have become biological. And how shall we name these technologies? So participants, over to you. Our biofuture reality. Well, this future is we way have, more interesting. Yeah. We should come this previous. Yeah, come I think we should get closer. We should, yes. we, we should move. <laughs> Let's move to the future. That's Bloody difficult. <laughs> Very heavy. <laughs> Complicated. I think the future That's is calling us this way. So I'm going backwards into the future. So. <laughs> oh, wow. I think the scope oh, how, of this stage, How Walter Benjaminian of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh! Little circle. 
Mother no. Nature asks that we form a little circle. You squashed the black box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it can deform into whatever shape it wants. And what species is it? Well, we have to decide. That's right, we have to give it a name. Why don't we just ask it what its name is? What's okay. your name? <laughs> Are you the outside of the little black box thingy? She speaks to me. Mm. Mm. So you see, it took them lo a long time, from 2017 until 2048, to realize that in order to travel to space, you needed drugs. So now that we Colombians control mm. space travel, <laughs> <laughs> The world is a oyster, <laughs> and this is yours. <laughs> well, it used to be that um, our fastest machines were digital machines, but um, now our fastest machines are analog machines. Benjamin, everything is carbon-based now. We don't have all this kind of stuff where I'm from. This is all a bit new to me. Ooh. Where are you from? <laughs> uh, 2048. <laughs> <laughs> no, none, of, none of that stuff. So this is. Uh, you all took our music. cows and you made squares out of them. That's what I think. Ooh. You grow them. Is that a cow? <laughs> I thought it was a mirror. No. <laughs> and our dieting is obsolete. <laughs> okay, should we share? Instead? Does that hurt? I, not, I don't not know. You, yeah, uh, yeah we, we should ask it. <laughs> so it took three years for my house to be fully grown. Uh, yeah. uh, and that yeah. was at least three months longer than what they had told oh, me. Oh, crap. Yeah. But those, th those three year old houses are like three year old kids. I know. They yeah. Just, yeah. You know, they keep waking up in the, eve in the middle of the evening, <laughs> and you have to go there and take them into uh. bed. Now imagine that, <laughs> putting your house to bed. Uh, very hard. Don't even get me started about the garage door opener. Oof. Those tendons just keep on snapping. <laughs> so you have a house you had to grow. Yeah. My house had to grow me. Your house had to grow you. All right. Oh. Do, do, you, do you come with a video room? <laughs> no, that's uh, from the... Oh, that's... Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. from back in the day. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but... I'm a space archaeologist, so I don't spend much time on Earth. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I don't know yes. about you're, these You're problems. one of our very good clients. You're always like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I find you new tools. Ooh. Thanks for your custom. What changed on Earth from the last time that you were here? And how long has it been? I've, we're honored that you've descended to join us. I mean... Well, three dimensions evolved into two dimensions. Well, that's yeah. certainly yeah, a change. That's, yeah. a problem. that's how he came here. The lichens are having a heyday. Don't they do well in space? <laughs> Along with those water bugs? I and studied my astrobiology. And tardigrades. That's Absolutely. Right. There's yeah. only a few things that love radiation. Was that new skeletal structure <laughs> they tried for yeah, the space vehicle? Did that work, that biomorphic design yeah. that they initially came up with, that then they grew the algae over and it became this self-sustaining system? Oh, you mean the Geiger, the, the, you know, the HR Geiger spaceship. Yes, yeah, but yeah, apparently yeah. it ate all the uh, <laughs> astronauts or something. Oh, so that's why you're with us. You escaped. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just a survivor, yeah. What does dating look like in the bio future, Ari? Oh. I really like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> they do well under a Well, yes, eight hands, eight legs. <laughs> I can see why you like them. Let's see. Oh, look, look, there he is. Stop there, Abe Sapien. Stop, stop. Look, Ab, Abe Sapien. Uh, engineered back in the day mm -hmm. by Mexican uh, uh, geneticist scientist Guillermo del Toro. Mm. 
<laughs> that was his whole fourth career. <laughs> that was his, yeah, yeah, fantastic. I mean, after we, he took some Colombian drugs. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, I mean, he, yeah. Put them together, yeah. you grow <laughs> You worlds. grow a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. And that looks like the petri dish that we grow the knowledge capsules in. Mm. Mm. Those lasted me all the way through, uh, through elementary school. Oh, yeah. And the, this is one of our knowledge capsules on the bottom here. Yeah. It just it digs right into your brain and makes the neurons for you, so you don't have to bother to try to learn. Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, that's, that that, but we can, we can actually take those, we can take imprints of our neurons and then, and then paint each other's skin with mm. them. Yeah. Uh -huh. That, that's what that is. I mean, at least that's how we practice it in outer space. I don't know about yeah. <laughs> on Earth. The whole neural aesthetics. Or the neural ritual. You cut your own hand and then you share it. <laughs> and you grow something else. That's homoeroticism these days. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spin it's a good again. thing I have a... Uh, O oh, positive. Well, you have your spider. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Everyone there. likes me. <laughs> the future's going to do well. Let's spin again. We want to see some other of our biotechnologies you can that, change we can, your blood that we can describe. <laughs> no, universal. Don't know. I fit with everyone, but they don't fit with me. Yes, this is, this is one of those visions of the future, that Skype vision of the future that we referred to with actual neurons now connecting the devices. It's much more efficient that way. What, what happened to Herland? You know, this planet of women only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard it was a very successful utopia. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been to space most recently. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, they're still thriving, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoy the practice of uh, swan dancing. Um, Swan dancing, that sounds very interesting. I want to know more. <laughs> well, <laughs> Look, I'm Latin American. Everything that is dancing appeals to me, so... <laughs> oh, stop here, Swan stop dancing. here. I it's saw these red. in the market the other day, and I wasn't sure what they were, this bottom <laughs> image here. What, what species are these now? Dog. Benjamin, you can, you can tell me. You're closest. Dog. Dog. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Do they come pre-curled or do they ever uncurl? No, it tastes like shit. And they taste like shit. <laughs> yeah. Except in New York. <laughs> Except in New York, they taste better in New York. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that they ate, they'd ate uh, rats in New York. But you know, that's how they finish their... Man, they do all sorts of stuff in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Let's spin a little bit more. I see something else coming up here. I'm not sure what this was on the, on the left middle here. The one there? Yeah, let's stop. Um, it's strudel. <laughs> Ice cream? No, it's just dog. <laughs> 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 Some things haven't changed. <laughs> and look at these little tiny drones flying around this thing. Ooh, did they even wow. have drones in 1995? How did they know the future? You no, know, that everything is bioorganic. They are birds. No, drones are no, bees. Drones, yeah. They're honeybees. That's a male bee. They just do a lot more work than they did it back then. What's, what's this one right here? Yeah. It's really just above the, the black box, our faithful. Oh. What is, what is happening in this one? It's almost like they're occupying two different bodies. It looks really oh, familiar. Oh, they're making your, your blood. That's it. That's, That's it. the ritual. They're, they're mm -hmm. mixing blood and then they'll swap bodies. You yeah. see? She's going to download, uh, the, the, the one on the, on the uh, right is going to download uh, uh, his or her consciousness on the other one. Uh, he's, her, it, this, that, the other. I like it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Downloading. Share, you yeah, can that's why we don't need the Facebook anymore. Yeah, we should swap bodies. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that... Uh, it is a new liquid, a new liquid future. Yeah. So. 
I, I do hear our, our next future arriving. So mm. I, I have a sense that the lights may be changing again in a moment. Uh, what's that? This image here. Oh, that's my, that, my nightmare. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> How what, did that get in there? Right? So. When the when blood swappy goes wrong, that's what comes yeah. out. <laughs> he ate too much dog. <laughs> yeah. Our third reality is upon us, then. What? And we're all grateful it's the last one. <laughs> on a space traveling. Long after. <laughs> with my joint. <laughs> Long after Google, <laughs> Apple, <laughs> Facebook, and Amazon. Oh, yeah, man, where's those Colombian uh, products? <laughs> yeah, you need your, your Sierra Nevada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. A social future of liquidity where's in all of its meanings. when you need it. <laughs> Back? And a world where we externalize our dreams, the and therefore a world of collective communication, or at least we'll try, where we speak in tokens, a sentence or two, or even a fragment of a sentence as we socialize our media in this liquid future. The future will be woman. The future will be Amerindian, or there won't be a future at all. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the joint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pass the joint. I've been in this black box so long. In what ways is it liquid outside? <laughs> That's not how you smoke a joint. <laughs> <laughs> it's just distributed in the air. You can just breathe. You'll get high, don't worry. You will hardly breathe anymore. Everything's <laughs> liquid that we drink. <laughs> Does that mean my high is just, uh, you know, floating around? Maybe the audience is getting high right now. <laughs> Look at them. No, they're getting really stupid. No, they're too busy mining those bitcoins or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's liquidity. Uh -oh. Things are liquid. <laughs> there's a lot so, of water and there's probably a lot of... Juice? Entropy. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> and entropy as well, hopefully. Otherwise, you can derive anything, I mean. <laughs> so as we find ourselves en enmeshed in this uh, entropic mess, shall we call it, <laughs> what of these items on here relates to our world of liquidity? Hmm. Well, all of them. The background? Yeah, the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The background. <laughs> <laughs> Love the background. Everything's relational now. Everything's relational now. Okay. That's right. We don't like objects. <laughs> How many times have you all had to move because of increased liquidity? Constant movement. Yeah. I just bought a swimsuit. Am I old-fashioned again for, for owning a, a treehouse that has been in one place for some time and, and the rest of you don't have homes anymore? Well, fixity is kind of something of a luxury, so... We can seek it, but it's, it's expensive. And... Always in motion instead. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Does anybody live in any of the It's hard to in motion so much you don't know when you're moving anywhere. Yeah. That's what the drugs are for, to, for focus, yeah. No, they're for listening. <laughs> and focus listening, yeah. and listening. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have landscapes anymore, we have soundscapes. And dreamscapes. And dreamscapes. Mm. And nightmarescapes. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Something must be up with time then. I need another joint. <laughs> I mean, if, if we have those three things, there must be something up with time. Something must be repeating. Like, is it the universe? I mean, the mm. Earth has slowed down by 8.75 milliseconds since 2017. And counting. And counting. It just makes this draw out that much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I'm thinking, ooh, I need a drink? Yeah, 
Yeah, what happened to all that acceleration, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, Bring it, it on. In 2017, there. He saw he saw that Colombian high-grade marijuana. Everybody just to slow oh, down. <laughs> That's the problem. Hmm, so in 2017, though, he observed the, the fourth wall, but we don't have to do that now. It's true. It's true. We may be in need of other forms of liquidity, is what I'm gathering. So. <laughs> I really think. So. I think the hour is late. I agree. Thank you for joining us in our consensual hallucination. <laughs> And I think all of us in 2048 wish all of you in 2017 a very good life. Right. Take care.